Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. Today we're going to be continuing our UV Tools set of videos and we're going to be looking at the UV Editor. You can find the UV Editor in lots of different ways but the most common would be to go under the Windows menu and here is the UV Editor. If I click that and open it you'll see the UV Editor open. In order to demonstrate any of these UV tools I need to have some UVs to demonstrate them on. So to do that easily, I'm just going to go to the Sculpting tab here in Maya 2016 and they have here the visor for sculpting base meshes. If I click this, it opens this visor where they have lots of pre-built models with UVs already applied to them. So we can very easily use one of these to demonstrate these tools with. Let's just right click and import one of these models and we have here a fish that works. So if I select the fish and open the UV editor you can see the fish UVs here. So the tool we're going to be talking about today is under the tool menu here within the UV editor and we have the cut UV tool. You can also find it here in the UV editor toolbar. If you notice these green highlighted tools these are ones that are new to Maya 2016 and on the top row the second one here is the cut UV tool. And, also you can, and like I said, you can find it in a tool, cut UV tool, and let's go into the options. When I uh, activate the tool, you'll notice my UVs all kind of turn blue. I'm just going to click this button here. It looks like a little picture of mountains in the sun or something. I'm going to click this to just hide that texture. The texture is simply this peach color. I'm just going to hide it for now just so it's easier to see. And we have here our cut UV tool options. I'm going to hit the reset tool button to reset everything to their defaults. So the cut UV tool is new to Maya 2016. They, they do, they have had cut UV commands before, but what you typically would have done before is select the UVs you wanted to cut and then apply the cut to them. Now it's a little different. You activate the tool first. You click the button here to activate the tool. Then you can literally left click and drag and cut through a UV shell. And a UV shell, in case you didn't know, is simply a group of UVs that are all together like this. This fish model has been UV'd to have several different shells. You have the two main ones that are the profile shape of the fish, and then these smaller ones tucked into the corners here to represent, I believe, it would be the fins and things like that. So to cut through the UVs with the cut UV tool active, you simply left click and drag. And so you see what I did here. It uses, you'll notice as my cursor gets close to an edge, it highlights. I'm going to undo that cut first. So as I'm cutting through here, whatever edge that gets highlighted as I left click and drag, that is the edge it gets that the UVs get cut along. So if I'm just dragging through here and then I cut over here to this side, it will cut that square shaped uh, gap in the path. So you want to make sure you stay along the UV edge loop that you're wanting to cut along. If I want to cut this fish in half right through here, I need to left click and drag and keep it along this edge loop like this. And then it cuts that UV shell in two. So if I turn off that tool just by hitting the W key, you see I have two UV shells that are separate. If I right click, choose UV as my component selection type, I can select the group of UVs along this side of the fish, go to select, select shell, it will select the entire shell, which in this case is only the half of the fish because I cut that shell into two pieces like this. So let me undo all that and go back and we'll explore the cut UV tool a little bit more. So I'm going to click this button to activate the Cut UV tool. Now as I left click and start dragging, you'll notice my cursor gets a little tiny circle around the arrow. Hopefully you can see that little red circle. And that circle is acting like a distance. Let me undo the cut again. So for example, there's the Edge Select Sensitivity, where it says Edge Select Sensitive, but it's the sensitivity of the Edge Selection. The edge selection is controlled by that brush, that circular shape around my cursor. So if I increase this, left click and drag, you'll notice my circle is much larger now. Let me undo that cut again and increase this even more. You can left click and drag and see that circle 
get larger. For example, starting from the outside of the shell, the circle is smaller. And as I get deeper into the shell, the circle gets larger. And then as I get toward the edge of the shell again, it gets smaller. So the shape of that brush kind of dynamically changes depending on how close to the shell border you are. Let me undo that. And I'll reset this back to the default value. So the edge select sensitive slider controls that brush size. Then we have, I'm going to skip a couple things. We have display all shell borders. If I just check this, you'll see that the borders of the shells get highlighted in these thick colors, which helps you see them in case you have lots of small shells that are close together and you can't really tell the borders from where there's not borders, you can display all shell borders with this checkbox and it will display them quite obviously. So you can see these holes that are within the shell that we might not have noticed before, but that is where the fins are sticking out of the body and they have been UV'd separately over here in the corners. So there are these gaps within the shell that if you didn't have this turned on you may not have known about otherwise. I'm going to keep that on for now, just hopefully it'll visual, help visualize the cut UV tool as we use it. So back up here we have some other options. Steady stroke is a checkbox. If we turn it on, there's no obvious difference to the cursor, but you'll see what happens if I left click and drag. We get this line, and then I that dot kind of being dragged behind my cursor. And as I click and drag and start pulling it, through the fish, you'll notice that that dot that's being dragged behind my cursor is the actual cutting tool, not my cursor itself. So it's dragging, almost like dragging an anchor behind the ship or something, it's dragging the cut tool behind the cursor until I got get to the end like that. Let me undo that. So steady stroke tries to help you steady your mouse stroke by dragging the tool behind it. Let me uh, demonstrate somewhat by left click and drag out here. You see even though my my mouse might be jittering around jagged, in a jagged motion, the actual path that the cutting tool is taking is not jittering around like that because I have a steady stroke tool active which kind of drags the tool behind my cursor and so little small motions like this with my cursor does not affect the cut tools position so I can have a smoother stroke overall as I drag it through a UV shell. Hopefully that makes sense. If I turn the steady stroke off you'll notice that this distance slider becomes grayed out. In the beginning the distance slider was not grayed out but that's just a little bit of a bug in Maya. If you turn the steady stroke on and then turn it off again the distance slider will start graying out like it's supposed to when steady stroke is not turned on. But the distance slider is active when steady stroke is active and that controls the distance that this, the cut tool is dragged behind the cursor, the distance between the cursor and the tool. If I increase this slider and click and drag you'll see that the cut tool has a much longer line and it doesn't even start moving. Remember this black dot over here at the left end of this line is the actual cutting tool my cursor is not the cutting tool, it's just being dragged behind my cursor, but this line is that distance, and when my cursor gets to the end of the line and I start moving, then my cut tool gets dragged behind the line, kind of like dragging a uh, water skier behind a boat. Your, that's, this line is that rope, your cursor is the boat, and the cut tool is the skier. So the longer the line, or the longer the distance slider, value the longer that line is. I can decrease this again and click and drag and you see that line changes length. So that's what the distance slider does. I'll turn off steady stroke for now. Then we have the cut open ratio. I'm going to hit the my reset tool button here just to get all default values. I can turn display all show borders back on. So cut open ratio by default is 0.1. And what that is is how much of a split happens between edges when you cut the UVs. If I click and drag again through here, you notice there's a their gap gets opened between the edges as I cut them. And so the size of that gap is the cut open ratio. Let me undo that cut and I can increase this cut open ratio. Left click and drag through here and you notice the gap is now much larger. 
So depending on how large of a gap you want, that's what you would set with your cut open ratio slider. And by a value of zero, you'll see it gets practically no split open at all. It is still right on top of each other, but the shells are separated. Just those edges are right on top of each other. So yeah, I think that's pretty much all the tool settings that the Cut UV tool has to offer. The Cut UV tool is probably one of the more used tools when editing UVs. You will often have the need of cutting the UV shell and then sewing them back together, which we'll go over in another video, which is right here below the Cut UV tool. There's the Sew UV tool. You can kind of guess what it might do, but we'll talk about that in its own video. So again, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.